this is going to be our demo on SVG. Um, if you haven't already, you should check out the notes um, that are posted on the course site. Um, you can see I go over some of the basics of creating SVGs, some of the basics of um, interacting with SVG, uh, animating SVG, and um, controlling animations. Um, and so you should look over these resources, and there's some links at the bottom of the page um, before diving into this tutorial, um, because this will give you sort of the background that you're going to need to be able to uh, understand the tutorial and work with your own SVGs. Um, okay, so now that we've all read those notes, let's dive right in. I'm going to start with a SVG graphic that I've created in Adobe Illustrator. Um, there are also free programs um, that are available, uh, like um, what is it called? Ink Inkscape is a good one to use if you don't want to pay. For Adobe Illustrator or use the um, copies of Adobe Illustrator in the computer lab. Okay, so I just made a graphic just as SVG. Um, I grouped it together and I named that group SVG logo as you can see in here. Um, and so when I export this in, in my SVG markup, which is going to be XML markup, um, we're going to see uh, that um, group ID which will help us manipulate the SVG in code. Okay, so we put it together as a group. I name the group, and then I'm just going to save as. I'm going to save. I'm going to make a new folder on my desktop. Um, I'll just call it, I already have an SVG demo folder, but I'll just call this one um, SVG. And then I have my logo.svg. Um, I choose SVG as the format in Illustrator and hit save. Um, this will prompt you with some options. Uh, usually this will default to SVG 1.1, um, Adobe CF CEF. We're not using any fonts, so we don't really need to worry about this for now. Um, and then one thing that you might need to change is the image location. Um, it often defaults to em embed. Um, you should change that to link. Um, okay, so once you've set all your settings, you can take a preview of the code. Um, this looks good to me. And so we're going to hit OK, and we're going to save that logo. OK, so now I'm going to quit out of Illustrator and open my SVG folder on my desktop. And there we go. We have our logo.svg, and there it is. OK, so now I'm going to throw my SVG folder into TextMate and get started here. Okay, so what we're going to do in this uh, demo is we're going to use the SVG as a um, sort of splash page logo for our, for our website, and we're going to add some animations to that. And then we'll, we'll use that same graphic for um, also the logo in the, in the header of the website. Okay, so to start off, I'm going to change uh, back to our normal Mac Classic view and increase the size a little bit. And let's take a look at our SVG code. OK, maybe that's a little too big. OK, so if we look at this, our first line is just our XML encoding. Um, the second line is just a line a comment that Illustrator generates um, to show that it was uh, made in Illustrator. Um, and then we have our doc type declaration for SVG. And then finally, we have our SVG um, uh, tag here with some information, the width and the height, our view box, um, a few other things. And then here we have our first group, which is the ID SVG logo, which we wrote in um, Illustrator. And then that has our information. So we have the path with the stroke and um, our, all the points in our path and uh, all the coordinates. Okay, so what we want to do is embed this on our page. And so the first thing I'm going to do is create an index.html uh, file, which is going to be our splash page. Um, and very quickly, I'll just set this up, doc type HTML, try to spell these things correctly. Then I'll have a head, say title, SVG demo, 
uh, I'll put a character set in here just so it make sure we can read everything correctly. Um, and then I'll close the head tag and I'll open the body tag. And I'll close that. And then we're not going to really need much here. I'll close my HTML because it's just going to be our SVG. And so now we're going to embed the SVG on our page. Um, and what we'll do here, um, like you'll see in the notes, is we're going to use um, the embed tag, which is going to give us the ability to script with the SVG um, and also display it. Um, and so I'll just write that here. Embed source is going to be logo.svg. And then my type is going to be image slash SVG plus XML. OK, and so when we open index in our Google Chrome browser, you can see our logo is in the upper left hand corner. Um, and that is because uh, we haven't positioned it or sized it or anything like that. But we have our nice SVG logo with lots of resolution. We can increase the size as much as we want to. And so let's go ahead and place that in the middle of the page. Um, and so what I'm going to do is say width is 100%. Um, this is going to be in my SVG embed tag in the HTML. And so I'm going to say width is 100%. And that the SVG logo has a, a width um, and a view box declaration which is 180 pixels, um, but I can increase. And so that's going to be the size. We'll see that our SVG art is still just 180 pixels wide. Um, but by making the SVG embed tag 100%, now if we look at this, we can see that this tag is actually just taking up 100% of the width of our browser, um, which is going to be nice because it'll be centered. And so if we look at this at a different size, I'll drag my browser in like that. We can see that it's still centered. OK. So then I want to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to go into my HTML. And one thing that's nice about SVG is they're customizable. And so I'm going to make it, let's say, height equals 400 pixels. And so that's going to resize both the height and the width of the SVG. It's going to keep them in proportion. And the proportions will stay the same in our um, SVG markup. OK, so that's nice. Now we've got it in the middle of our page. Um, and I might want to move it to the center of the page. Uh, I could do that um, by using a height, uh, changing the height in the SVG, um, or adding a margin. And so let's just go ahead. I'll just put an inline style here, and I'll just put a margin at the top of the page. So I'm going to say style type gets text slash CSS. Close that. Oops. And then I'll just say embed margin top is say 200 pixels. Okay, so now it's you know there's a little bit of a margin at the top of our page, and it looks basically centered. Um, it won't be fully centered on all browsers, obviously, but um, this will be good for now. Okay, so now what we want to do is create a cool animation. Um, that introduces people to the page. And so there's a few different animations that we can add to the SVG tag itself, um, which will uh, introduce the, the logo into the page um, and also let us interact with the logo. So we're going to go into our SVG. And what we want to do is have it uh, fly in from the right side of the screen. And so inside of our SVG logo ID, which is the group that contains all of the information for our path and stroke. I'm going to create a new animation, and it's going to be an animate motion. You can look at how to do this animation in the notes. Um, I'm just going to go through it very quickly. OK, so what I want to do is have it fly in from the right side of the screen. And so I'm going to say animate motion. I'm going to say from. I'm going to say, let's say, just 2,000 pixels um, x and 0 y. And then we can say 2 and we'll say 0, 0. So it'll go back to where it started. And then for fill, we're going to say freeze. And this is a little trick that we can put in there to make sure that um, once it's finished animating, it stays on the screen. So we'll just say fill is freeze. And then for duration, I write dur. 
and then let's just say one second, or let's say 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, and so now um, our SVG appears when we load the page, it flies in from the right side of the screen. Um, and so if we wanted to make this a little bit more of a surprise, maybe we could have a thing where the page is completely white for a while and then it flies in. So one way that we could do this is just increasing um, and it, it just it change where it starts. So we can use this begin tag and say we want the animation to begin at one second. Um, the problem here clearly is that the SVG starts on the uh, in, on, on the page and then animates. And so what we need to do is actually change where the SVG is coming from and where it's sitting at the beginning. And we can do this pretty easily uh, using a transform property in the SVG group tag. And so what we want to say is transform, and then we can say translate is our value. And so that actually translates the origin from where the SVG is being drawn. Um, and so if you look at this SVG, the origin is somewhere right here, 0, 0. And that's going to be um, 0x and 0y. And so if we change the origin um, to, say, you know, 2000 or something, we can push it off the screen. So uh, let's translate to 2000, 0. And then we're actually going to be moving from 0, 0 to negative 2000. Um, you know, and there's probably there are some circumstances in which uh, 2000 is actually not going to give us enough space um, if somebody had their browser open on a very large screen. And the best thing to do here would be to use a little JavaScript to calculate the size of the window before running this animation. But uh, for the purposes of the demo, this is um, going to work fine. So now we see we've translated the SVG um, to 2000 pixels to the right. And then we animate the motion from 0, 0 from the origin to negative 2,000, which is now going to be on the screen. Um, and it begins one second after the page loads. So we have a nice white page, and here comes our SVG tag. OK, so another uh, property that is nice with the SVG is we can add um, photo filters. And so let's try adding a photo filter to make it appear that um, our SVG is moving very fast. Um, and so we'll start doing that right now. So now we're going to add a blur, and then we're going to animate that blur. So we're going to go in here, and we're going to create a new filter tag. Um, and we're going to add some properties to this filter tag, and then close it. And so what we're going to do is a filter effect Gaussian blur. Um, and that's a basic blur. You, you, you can use that in Photoshop and um, Illustrator and other programs. And, um, and so we're going to have a, a Gaussian blur. We're going to give it an ID so we can animate it later. So we'll just call it um, blur effect. And then we're going to give use the standard deviation attribute. Um, which is going to be the deviation of pixels in the blur. And so we have two values here. We have um, if we use just if we use one value, then it will affect both the x and the y blur. Um, but we can also use two values to affect um, the the x and y separately. And so if we use a offset of x and y, it will give us a nice effect where the x is more blur than the y, which will give us this sort of illusion of um, horizontal motion. Okay. So what we want to do is add this filter to our um, to our uh, SVG. And so I'm going to give the filter itself an ID. That uh, filter is going to be called blur. And so now we'll add a filter here to our, our entire SVG and it will have the URL blur. So it, it can use this ID tag um, with the URL to find this filter blur. So when we reload our page, now we see we get this SVG that animates in and it's all blurry. And so this gives us a nice illusion of motion. Um, so now what we want to do is uh, animate that blur at the same time as the motion, and so it, it snaps into focus. OK, so now in order to animate this blur, I'm going to make a new animate tag. Um, I'm going to choose the attribute name is going to be standard deviation 
um, because that's what we'll be animating. And then I'm going to say from is going to be 10, 1, which is the value it starts at. Then I'm going to say to 0, 0, which is going to be the base value. Duration, we'll say 0 0.5 seconds. And then begin, why don't we start this a little bit after our um, motion. So we'll say 1.4 seconds. And then we want to say fill is freeze. And then the last thing that we need to do is associate this blur with this animation. And so we're going to use this xlink attribute with the hypertext reference to the ID blur effect. Okay, so we'll close off that blur, go back to our animation, and there we go. So now we have this illusion of horizontal motion using um, the blur effect and the, the animate motion. Okay. So we want to add one last bit, um, which is going to give us a sense of interactivity um, when we click on this SVG to enter our website. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to rotate um, the SVG um, just to give us a sense of clicking on it. And there's a couple different ways that we can do this. One is using CSS, and the other is using SVG animation again. Um, so let's do the CSS version first, since we're familiar with that. Um, we're going to add a new CSS page. Uh, so let's add style.css, um, and now we have to actually embed this CSS in our XML. Um, and so, how to do this, so let's look it up, XML, CSS, embed, SVG. So, let's look at this. So I'm going to copy this uh, embed code, our XML style sheet, and we say style.css. Um, so now we can apply CSS styles here, um, and we can use the uh, CSS3 transition uh, rotate to, to change this. Um, and so let's go into our styles. Um, we'll make, first we're going to add a, a, a hyperlink um, to our SVG. And so SVG XML uses an anchor tag for the hyperlink, but we have to use this xlink um, property. And so we're going to say xlink href gets main.html. We'll build this page later. And then we're going to say target gets uh, parent. The reason we need to say this is because um, we don't want to load an HTML page into our SVG embed tag. What we want to do is just load a new page into our target window. Um, and so if we don't put that target, we'll just get another HTML page inside of our HTML page. Okay, so we're going to say um, href is main.html and the target is parent. And now um, what I'm going to do, um, so let's, let's see how that works. Once I load my page, it links, and then when I click on the SVG, uh, it opens that page, which doesn't exist yet. Okay, so now what we want to do is have some sort of um, animation that occurs when we click on this hover link. Um, I'm going to say SVG anchor, and I'm going to say WebKit because we're using Chrome. WebKit transform origin, and I'm going to say 50% X and 50% Y. So it'll move the origin that it's rotating around into the middle of the graphic. And then I'm going to make a transition which is going to be WebKit transform, and let's say 0 0.3 seconds, so it'll be relatively fast. I'll say SVG hover, and now I'll say uh, WebKit transform, and let's rotate around the z-axis, which is the axis coming towards us, 180 degrees. So now I go back to my logo, see the animation when I hover over it, the SVG rotates around. And I can click on it and go to my main page. Okay, so that's our splash. Um, now we're going to use the same graphic um, to, on, our, uh, on a new page, which is going to be the, home, the main page. Um, as a, as a header logo. So let's make a new file. It's going to be main.html. 
um, we'll grab some of the markup from our uh, index page, get rid of this margin, um, and I'll get rid of this embed. And so what I'm going to have here, I'll just have a, uh, let's just have a header. And inside this header, we're going to have a, a list. Um, and our first list item will be the SVG logo. Um, so we'll make that right there. And then we'll have a few other list items that will just be um, our menu. So we can just make a basic menu here, hit text, and then close the anchor, and then close the list item. And then we'll close the owner list, and we'll close the header. Okay, so this is just going to be the basic part of our website. We'll have a blog, we'll have an about page, and we'll have a contact page. Okay, so there we go. Um, let's do some styling really quickly. Uh, let's say um, for our um, header, let's just say uh, we'll do a couple resets, margin zero. Maybe I'll skip ahead of this part. Padding is zero. And then we'll say UL margin zero, padding zero. The style is new. And then we have to attach our style sheet. So we'll say link UL gets style sheet type gets text slash CSS, and href gets style.css. Okay, well, style our list items. We'll say float is left. Let's say width is 100 pixels. And we'll say margin, or actually we might be fine with that. Okay. And then um, let's style our anchor tags so that uh, they, uh, let's, let's style our header, give it a nice gradient. So we'll say header, say height is 60 pixels, and then let's grab a nice CSS gradient. So we'll go to our CSS gradient generator. Um, we could play with one of these, or let's just look for a nice color. So that looks like a good color. Uh, we can just grab this for Chrome. Uh, normally we want to get all of them, but we'll just get this for Chrome for now. So we'll copy that, throw it in there. And so let's take a look at our header now. We get our links um, and our little header section. So now let's place the links a little bit lower in the page. So we'll just say anchor, um, let's say header anchor, and we'll just say position is relative, and top is 20 pixels. So now they're relatively centered in our page. So now we'll S add our SVG logo. Um, and so what I've done is created a new um, copy of this original SVG logo called logo header, because we're going to add different functionality to it. And so I'm going to throw it in here. Okay, so say embed source gets logo header svg type gets image slash xml plus svg plus xml. And so now we'll load that. You can see there's our nice svg graphic, but it takes up a little bit more space than we would want. And so what we can do is say the width gets 100%, which will be the list item, which is 100 pixels. And so it'll be 100 pixels wide. And so it's a little bit um, far down on the page. And so we'll just change that. And we'll say um, width is 100%. And let's say height gets 60 pixels. So it'll fit inside our header. So there we go. Now we have our SVG, and it animates into our header. OK, so now we have this functionality, but let's change that because um, we've already seen that. And so 
for our styles. Let's just get rid of these guys for now. Um, we could throw those as an inline style into our um, splash page later. Um, and we'll leave the rest of the SVG the same. Okay, so now we get this nice little um, animation. Okay, so one thing that I might want to do is change the way that this SVG looks here. And so what I can do is actually open this SVG back in Illustrator. So let's drag it into Illustrator. And so we're about to learn an important lesson, which is that if we play with our SVG code, when we open it back in Illustrator, it might not look like what we expect. And so as we can see when I zoom in, it doesn't appear to be any graphics, but when I open this layer, the group still exists and this SVG logo still exists. But as we uh, remember from before, we actually translated where this SVG is. And so we get rid of that transform. Now we can reload it in Illustrator. Um, so let's grab logo header.svg. So now we can see it. So we just have to be careful about um, which tags we use because it might make our SVG disappear. Okay, so let's look at our layers. Um, we have this group with our SVG logo. Um, and so let's duplicate this. I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to say edit. I'm going to grab it. Um, so I'm going to select this. Copy and paste. So now I have two um, versions of this SVG logo. And so I'm going to change the color of this one. So let's go and change the color. Uh, maybe something to go with that pink. Maybe a nice blue. Um, and let's get rid of the stroke for now. Okay, and so let's also put it behind the SVG logo. Okay, so now let's move it back a little bit. Now we have this nice kind of um, effect. Uh, let's ungroup this. So now we just have these two groups of the SVG logo. Um, okay, so that looks pretty cool. Move this over a little bit. And then we'll save that. So we'll save it as SVG logo header, save all the same stuff. We're going to replace it. Um, and so then when we go back to our page, we'll notice that um, some of our uh, animation things have been changed. Um, and so if we go and look at um, our page, we can see that it's animating in the wrong direction. And so what we want to do um, is find um, here we have our SVG logo one and then down here we have our SVG logo so SVG logo is going to be the black one and then the new SVG logo one is going to be the blue one so let's just change this to background this ID and we'll change um, this to foreground. So they both have these animate tags on them. So now what we want to do is move this animate tag and it's, be, it's been rewritten by Illustrator to be um, slightly more uh, in line with good practices. And so what we're going to do is just use this animate up here. I'm going to make another group just to group the whole thing together. right there. Okay, so now it still animates and what we need to do is just transform this group. So I'll go to this group which is holding everything together now. I'm going to say transform gets translate 2000 zero. So now it will go right into place. Okay, so then the last thing I want to do, you know that I have these two layers, I want to show how we can animate them separately. So what we're going to do is create a, um, an active state so that when we click on 
our SVG will see it um, animate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the ID of the SVG to trigger. So we're going to use this to trigger an animation. And then I'm going to create a new animation inside um, our background group. And I'll say animate motion. And I'm going to say um, from, say, negative 2,000 to 0, which is where it is, to gets, actually, I'm just going to say 0, 0, since we're using a different group. From 0, 0 to 200, 0. Duration, I'm going to make this relatively quick, so 0 0.2 seconds. Fill is going to be freeze. And do we need anything else? Begin. So begin is going to be trigger dot click. So that's going to reference the trigger, which is the SVG, and we're going to give it a click event. And so this is similar to the events in jQuery. Um, and you can also have mouse over or mouse out, but we're just going to now when I click, uh, the background animates. And so let's make, um, let's use the same animation on the foreground, but we're going to do the opposite direction. So go foreground, animate motion, and we'll say 2, negative 200, 0. So now when I load this, I'm going to click on my guy, the 2, um, animate in separate directions. Um, so uh, we would need to write another function to make them reappear once I've clicked on them, but um, this, is, this will work for now. And so now we have a couple different interactions. The logo appears. We click on it, appears again, we click on it again. Um, and so these are just a couple ways you can customize SVGs with animation. Um, and because of the scalable vector graphics, we can do a lot of other things with the graphics and have those animations still be intact. Um, okay, that's all for now. Uh, I hope you, that made sense for you guys. And um, you know, as always, email me if you have any questions.